BHD here. So this is it. It's finally here. Google Pixel 4a. And this is a really simple one, right? So the 3a was Google's budget phone with a great camera, right? Double down on that. So this 350 bucks is Google's budget phone with an excellent camera. And that's really it. It doesn't take long using this phone to figure that out. By the time you see this, I've been using it for almost a week now. And really the formula here is keep it simple. Everything here is really clean and simple. I mean, just for starters, look at it. You know, it's a plastic build as we've all seen and it's all one piece. So you can see there's no seams anywhere on the sides or the top or the bottom, simple. Then there's the spec sheet. There is one size, one color, one spec. Simple. The whole phone is about the same size as the iPhone 11 Pro, but noticeably lighter, of course, thanks to the plastic. And I like the size. I think it's a good one size to have. And with that, on the front of the phone, you're getting a 5.8 inch 1080p OLED display. Flat screen, 60 hertz, and that hole punch cutout for the selfie camera. Some people don't like the hole punch. To me, honestly, really, I've gotten used to it by now, and it's better than a notch. Uh, it's not the most incredible display, but there's definitely no big issues with it. You're still looking at well over 400 pixels per inch, and I've noticed a pretty decent range of brightness and uh, some good viewing angles. The no high refresh rate at this price isn't a deal breaker, but we'll get to performance in a second. And then the rest of this hardware package is simple. You guessed it, you're on the same page now. It's very simple. It's all matte black everything all the way around giving it uh, not a soft touch feel, but more of like this powder coated slight texture. And I like it. And of course there's a signature pixel accented light green power button. And actually these buttons are super clicky. They're pretty loud too. I think they're the best feeling part of this phone. And there's an honestly pretty disappointing single mono speaker at the bottom, but in positive news, there is still a headphone jack up top it lives on with the budget Pixel line. Now with a lot of phones back a couple years ago, I used to always have this moment where I would, you know, bend it, twist it, see if I can feel any weird creaking or anything happening with the phone. And I sort of slowed down and stopped doing that because pretty much every phone now is fine in that department. Plus Zach does his durability tests, but I got my Pixel 4a and I started to do that a little and there is actually a little bit of bending to it. I don't know if Zach's gotten his yet, but I'm pretty sure when he does, and he does his test, I'm predicting it's gonna snap in half. I don't think the plastic unibody build is the most durable, but on the upside, it's not glass, which means it won't shatter. So, you know, there's ups and downs. Again, with this whole thing, we have to keep the price in mind. It's 350 bucks, so I am totally fine with a matte black unibody plastic build. Also, if you're clumsy or worried about dropping your phone, you already know channel sponsored dbrand's got you covered with their made by Google certified grip case. It's grippier than the naked phone. And yes, it comes in matte black or literally any other color. So you can check it out at the link below. My favorite part of this hardware though, and maybe it's the best example of them truly keeping it simple, is the fingerprint reader still on the back. Same place it was on the Pixel 3a and the Pixel 2 and the original Pixel and the Nexus 6p and the Nexus 5x. Look, the point is, this is the tried and true place to put it. Zero problems with this fingerprint reader on the back here. But look, this is the Pixel 4a, and we all know the reason we're here. And it's the cameras. And they're really good, spoiler alert, again, with photos. So there is a single camera on the back here. It kind of resembles the multi-camera setups with the rounded rectangle, but without spending the extra money for extra useless cameras, nice. And so it's just one camera and a flash, 12 megapixel sensor at f1.7, with OIS. The numbers aren't too crazy, but the photos you get are exactly what we'd expect right in the same style as Pixel 4. If anything, just a little bit softer, but it has that confident, contrasty, high dynamic range look and great color that we're used to from the Pixel, which is so awesome at this price. Night sight, still super clean. I mean, these are great photos for a $350 phone. And thanks to that, I'm totally fine with it being the single camera on the back. Like, do I miss the ultra wide a little bit? Yeah, I came from a phone with an ultra wide, so I guess a little bit, but at this price, I'm not mad. Do I miss the depth sensor at all? I mean, with a single camera, Google's been doing really good portrait mode photos of animals and humans and all kinds of objects, so I don't miss the depth sensor at all. Do I miss the two megapixel macro camera? No. So keeping it simple, 
just works great here. I don't think anyone's gonna be mad this isn't quad cameras. And that also translates to the software experience as well. I remember when I reviewed the Pixel 2, I called it the smartest smartphone, mainly thanks to a lot of Google features on top of Android. Now this budget version carries a couple less of those googly features, but I still really like the ones it has. Like there is no squeeze for assistant, they couldn't build that into the hardware, but you can always swipe up diagonally from the corner and that gets you to Google Assistant just as fast. There is no Project Soleil or radar sensors up in the front of this phone, but it still has raised to wake with the accelerometer and gyroscope, and you can turn this on or off. And then it has some of those Pixel exclusive features. It has live caption available everywhere, and I still love call screening and the now playing, which identifies songs in the background wherever you go and keeps a running list of them. Like every time I switch back to a Pixel, I love these features and I miss them on other phones. But also, like Pixel 3a, performance on the 4a on this phone is not that great. Now at first I thought it was just me over realizing it because I had just come from these super high end 120 hertz phones, but just having a 60 hertz phone shouldn't be a, a death sentence for smoothness. You should, phones were all 60 hertz a couple years ago and smoothness was fine. So it's a little more than that. I feel like the Snapdragon 730G is probably a lot more to blame here, and I couldn't stop noticing that it just wasn't very smooth. The phone just doesn't feel fast, I guess is the main point, which concerns me for how long it will last. You know, this is one of the bigger sticking points among a lot of the budget phones coming out now is when you extrapolate their value over time, you're kind of up against the gold standard of iPhone SE. But this phone has some of the same issues Pixel 3a had, which, you know, didn't stop people from loving Pixel 3a, as it's still a great camera in a phone for the price. But again, you should know what you're getting into. But of course, there is one more area where Pixel 3a outperforms the numbers on paper, and that's the battery. So this phone has a 3,140 milliamp hour battery. Doesn't seem like that high of a number, because it's not. Uh, the OnePlus Nord I just reviewed had like a 25% bigger battery. I wasn't expecting it to be great, but of course, I should know better because it's a 1080p 60 hertz screen and I was pleasantly surprised with the battery on the 4A. Now again, all of this is quarantine lifestyle testing, so it comes with the asterisk that all the rest of the phones have had, but if I'm getting five hours of screen on time comfortably with this phone and ending the day with 10 to 20% left consistently, I don't think anyone will have problems with the Pixel 4A's battery. So simply put, that's about it for this really simple phone. For some people, it's kind of forgettable, but for others, it's exactly what we were waiting for for this new Pixel. It, it's doubled down on everything the 3A had going for it and lowered the price. And so for this price, the, the lack of wireless charging or IP rating or glass and metal and stereo speakers and extra cameras really isn't a deal breaker. In fact, it's expected. The simple plastic build is expected. The 60 Hertz screen is fine. The biggest upside is still the camera and the biggest downside is still the performance. It's really just the only difference now is the existence of much more competition in this space with phones like OnePlus Nord and iPhone SE. Now, technically this phone undercuts them both in price, which is gonna matter to a lot of people. 350 bucks is an insane price for the amount of phone you're getting here and all these features, but each, each one of these phones is gonna have its own distinct advantages. iPhone and Nord are gonna be better performers, iPhone's gonna take better video, but you get more Google features here, better stills camera, so it's what you want. I just really love that it feels like Google's getting a little more competitive with this Pixel phone. Getting that lower price to undercut the competitors to give you a reason to buy it, it's great. I just hope this translates into them making a true high-end Pixel 5 flagship. Now, I don't know if that's smart to get my hopes up for that, considering their track record's not very good for flagships, but that's what I'm hoping this competitiveness translates into. But we'll see if that happens. Either way, that's been it. Pixel 4a, pretty simple. Thanks for watching. Catch you guys in the next one. Peace.